Okay, everybody, so I'm back at the mouth poisoning. I picked up a different Tomcat. This one says the active ingredient is bromethylene or bromethylene. So I looked it up on the internet, and some people said that this was the be-all and end-all of mouth poisons. Well, this is the one that I used in our shop, not in the barn. And I hadn't found more dead mice in the barn after a couple of days. I needed a refill. I was halfway through my bucket, so I picked up another one. This one is a dark green, and it actually smells sweet. So keep this away from your animals. I have heard of dogs digging these up. We had a uh, we had a dog eat a little bit of small mouse uh, bait in a rental house once. He had to go get uh, vitamin K supplements to not die. Well, I've got some woodchuck holes here, so I'm throwing some down in there because if I figure if it'll kill a rat and these other things, maybe a couple of dowsings will kill the woodchucks. There's a woodchuck living under that elevator and another one at the barn. So, my baits were still disappearing. And these have a hole in the middle, so some old farmers decided it might be a good idea to just go ahead and put a wire through those. So that the, so that any big things might not run off with it. So we're into January now, and I've been using that Tomcat bait. Well, I found out there are two different kinds. The dark green one has bromethylene, and I'll have to check the package on the other one. But this one is a darker green, and it is sweet smelling. It's really, really effective. Um, I found out from a, another viewer, I had said about this in my uh, live trap video, that the possums and the raccoons were running off with my bait. So we did a lot of fiddling around with the live traps. I've got one set back here. And if you didn't catch before, I said cat food is a great, um, even dog food, uh, live trap bait. So here's what I found. It's a new little kitty. She actually was born here and given away, and I was contacted by the owner the day of that last video. Wanted to know if I wanted to have some cats. There was a dead animal right there this morning, and she'd been hunting this area yesterday. I wonder if she kind of got into something because she's limping a little bit today. So, did a little investigating. So here's what I found. I saw that tail sticking out of my hay. I thought it was a possum. I pulled it out. A god dang rat. Nobody likes a rat. I don't care if it's every day. I'm going to go back and I'm going to buy that bigger bucket. The bigger quantity you buy, the more savings there is. And I'm going through one of these buckets about every four or five days just by being diligent about it. Because if their immune system's weak and they come back for more or they're taking that bait back to their house, if they're like a hunting and gathering kind of thing, or if they're going off, if there's little ones, I want them dead. Because you know there's young ones because they're always, you know, born in the spring. My uh, shop vat got all chewed up by those. So, little mice shaking out of there. Now I don't have a working shop vac. If you want to send me a Christmas present, I need a new shop vac. I got it all tore apart. It's a project. Anyways. So go buy yourself some of this Tomcat bait with the bromethylene in it. I think it's really great. The other one, you know, I found some dead mice. This rat could have been dead there for a couple days. It's cold, so you would not know. There's no decomposition of it. But keep it away from your livestock. Keep it away from your chickens and any little rabbits because, you know, they might not know any better. Um, the cats seem to be a lot smarter, and I've never lost a cat. So I'm just going to keep back at it and I'll let you know how well this product does. But boy, I tell you, it's golden with me and so are these cats. So this is Rumpelstiltskin and this is Cricket. Now, they were brought back here to be mousers and they're doing a real good job. And we had saw quite a few mice in their poops. I noticed I had these little tunnels into the manure piles after moving the pigs out. So we did a little research and found out that possums will move into dens of other animals. Now, here's another one. So I put the bait there thinking it was a rat originally, and we got that one rat. So it has been about three weeks 
since I found that dead rat. Only one I found. I have baited and uh, put live traps all through this whole barn. And we are filled to the brim with hay. This area here has not been touched at all. And there's very little open floor space up above. So this little back room was a dairy room. Let me show you that. So I am doing everything I can to try to keep the pests away from my chickens. But here we've got, um, this is the dairy room that I showed from the other side. It opens up to the dry floor over there. And we just keep some kind of excess storage here. You don't want, you know, your good barn tires sitting out in the sun rotting. So they're in here. And then I started in on this area for feeding our cows. Now I have gone through six stacks of hay and I haven't been finding critters and stuff in here. They, the tomcat bait, they'll kind of crawl back into their little places where they go. They tend to get back home and die. And it wasn't killing any possums or raccoons. So I started setting up my live traps everywhere I could. And I'll tell you, when you're stacking your hay, I normally stack these six bales high. I only stacked them five high to make sure that I had good ventilation through here. And I ended up kicking myself because I could have put another 200 bales in this room if I had gone six high. Here's my ventilation. I pulled my door off of here. See that? That's raccoon poop. They go all through here on the outside of the barn. This is that area that we cleaned out that had all that firewood in the spring when we were doing maple syrup. So the weeds have grown up tall and eventually I'd like to make this like a dry lot for loading and unloading animals out of the barn. I was out here the other night taking down my Christmas lights and I had them shining up onto the barn, you know, those projection style ones. And I saw a possum come right over here. Now the cats are always running in and out of here and jumping out of the barn windows. This area here gets quite muddy and I kept seeing possum or raccoon paw prints. You can tell because they're more of an oblong shape than the cat's paw. And you can generally make out like their claw. So the trick is don't leave any pet food out in the barn. They're barn cats. I feed them there just a little bit and they get about one cup of food a day. They don't even hardly touch it. Ever since they moved here, they are going after the mice. So this is my feed room. And a lot of times, yes, I leave this bin open and then I find little bits of spilt grain. Now I filled this yesterday, so that spilt grain is from me, no big deal. But I got a couple thumbs down on that last video about trapping the possums. And I can tell that those thumbs down on that video are probably that they didn't like my review or that they don't like that I'm trapping the possums in the first place. But I'll tell you what, these chickens cost anywhere from about three to five dollars a piece. So I braised them up. I just was editing together their chicken update video yesterday. So it ends up costing me about 20 or 25 dollars per chicken by the time they get to this size. So for it to have a whole family of raccoons or a possum to come in here, they don't kill one. They kill as many as they can get their hands on and kill them. So you can come out here and have five or ten dead chickens that were supposed to feed your family and then you've just thrown away all of that money. Now these guys should be laying eggs right now, but I'm not supplementing them with a winter light in the barn. I am so scared of a barn fire. I just don't like to do that. The kitties are scratching. Hi kitty cats. They like to use the whole barn for a scratching post. So I did what I could hardware cloth wise on the inside of their chicken coop to keep them safe. And on the outside, we've got that night guard blinking here and here. There's another one over on the other side. So I just wanted to give you an update about the baiting of these critters because I have been having a couple of chickens dying but because of that hawk flying around. My God, he is here every day stalking our farm. I don't think he's got anything better to do. Must be because of my eliminating the mice, he's coming around here and looking for a free meal with that. But we had a little bit of uh, leftover sugar. There was probably 20, 25 bags. And it's been kind of attracting those possums to the barn and they've been tearing it open. And in the last probably three weeks, we've caught about 11 possums. So I came out the other day, I had two possums. The day before, I had three possums in the live trap. 
today I got a raccoon. Got two raccoons before. Already for the new year, I am up to six possums and three raccoons. That is awesome. So those guys, you know, it's January. They get into breeding, have their babies, March, April, May. That's going to be less predators around here for the summer. So I'll be able to have maybe a fall batch of chickens or late summer batch and have them do well. So I just wanted to tell you, keep at it, no matter how discouraging it can be. I come out here days and there's nothing in the live trap at all. Other days, you know, there's two. So it works out really great. I've got uh, four live traps set right now. There was a fifth one that was small. And it works good for smaller animals, but raccoons can't really get into it. The possums do. Boy, I tell you, those are mean suckers, too. They don't like to get caught. I was watching a video of somebody the other day, and she was talking about tanning um, a possum fur. <laughs> I thought, I got some possums for you. <laughs> you can have all of them you want. So, so do you hear that? That's the Johnny Popper going. He's out there in the field. It is... I think today's January 6th. He's out there bailing hay today. Um, we had some we had some late season growth that he didn't get to and he just said, hey, I'm just gonna keep at it. He did the, that waterway at Thanksgiving. He did another little section over here and every time there's not snow. And I tell you, we haven't had a whole lot of snow. So, you know, it's nice for that, for doing jobs. I did a lot of extra jobs around the farm yesterday and we're just doing what we can to keep on top of things. So that's just a little update on what's going on on the farm. But things are going really well off for the new year, and I hope they're going really well for you too. So thanks for watching, everybody. And remember, we'll see you all next time. Hit that like button. Bye-bye.